Welcome back to Inside Ambition. I'm Alexandra George, and today we're talking to some STAR students who are doing research at Drexel right now. Hi guys, how are you? We're good, how are you? Why don't you start by introducing yourselves, your major, and what research project you're working on through STAR. So my name is Ansh. I'm an international student here at Drexel, and I'm a cybersecurity major minoring in computer science. Uh, my current project for the Star Scholars program deals with creating a linked data model. It is essentially trying to graph different aspects of ethical hacking together so that it's more easier to detect vulnerabilities, analyze threats, and secure systems across um, different infrastructure. So my name is Francis. I am also a sophomore at Drexel. I am a biological sciences major, uh, minor in neuroscience. So my project uh, looks at brain development, um, specifically in the field of neuroscience. So the developing brain um, requires very careful control of uh, gene expression and epigenetic factors. So that's what our project looks into. So my specific task is to uh, look at the Drosophila brain, which serves as a really good model for um, epigenetic control of brain development because there is a process known um, called axon pruning, wherein the different axons in the Drosophila brain get cut off to um, correctly connect the um, neural pathways within the fly brain. And so there is a specific uh, epigenetic reader known as kismet um, within the fly brain that is analogous to um, a reader in the human brain called CHD7. Mutations with CHD7 is often associated with Alzheimer's and CHARGE syndrome. And so by investigating kismet and understanding um, the mechanisms that control it and its mutations, it'll allow us to understand CHD7, so one, as treat uh, treatment options for Alzheimer's and CHARGE syndrome, and also just to add to the body of knowledge in epigenetics as a whole, because there is so little known in epigenetic readers. So that'll be a huge advancement in the field that scientists still have yet to discover. Wow, it seems like you guys have some pretty intense projects, which is really impressive after only having one year of higher education. So could you elaborate a little bit about how it feels to be doing a research project like this as someone with only a year of higher education um, and what that opportunity means to you. The Star Scholars program was definitely a great um, sort of first step into research. And uh, I, I've had some experience in the past with just maintaining a blog about common technological issues, but like the Star Scholars program was the first formal research program that I've ever done in my life. And uh, it's, it's really informative in the sense that we get to know how research works, essentially. And we get to explore different avenues of research itself and how we could take this further. Yeah, it's, it's pretty intense um, research to be doing at this age. People don't always get an opportunity to do that research, and sometimes it's very hard to come by. Francis, I know that both of you guys have projects that are a little bit more science based, but do you know anything about the kinds of projects that other students might be doing that aren't as science-based? Yeah, actually, I'm not very close friends with um, this new friend I met at STAR, but she was telling me about how her project combines science-based um, ideas, but with her um, strongest skill, which is in art and fashion design. And so that plus also art in terms of origami. So I, I don't know if you've heard about um, scientists using origami uh, techniques for space shuttles. And so she uses the, the ideas in that to um, create, I'm not sure if it was um, for fashion or if it was for some kind of industrial project, but it was just really nice to see how she was putting all those um, ideas together. And it just shows how like the STAR program really can accommodate anyone in any discipline and for as many disciplines as you would like to do. Yeah, for sure. And I know that you just mentioned that you made a friend through the STAR program and the STAR program is known for bringing students from all majors together because you're all housed on campus for one summer and you're the only freshman there. 
But that's a little bit different because the majority of you right now, with the exception of Anch and some others, are virtual. So what has the STAR program been doing for students in reference to creating that sense of family, in reference to creating those um, relationships, and how are you guys maintaining those relationships? Well, like you said, it's a little bit harder for me since I'm actually at home. Um, like, on she's got that in-person experience. But what STAR has done is, I don't know if they do this every year, but they split us up into houses. So it's kind of Harry Potter style. So my house is called the Cheese Steaks. You know, we've got cheesy names like that, all Philly related. And so every week we've got different challenges. Last week we had to make a Spotify playlist. I think this week we're supposed to do a Zoom karaoke. It's just silly kind of things to like get us to talk to each other. And at first I thought it was going to be really cheesy or tacky, but after a while you get to see that, you know, this is kind of what gets you through quarantine. So I was surprised at how it's really built the friendships um, with the people that I work with. And it just, you know, gives me something to look forward to every week. So time kind of flies by that way. Ansh, are you doing any research on campus or are you just living there? So currently I'm just living here. So the place I research is literally my desk at this point. <laughs> so technically you're doing research on campus, I guess, right? Kind of. <laughs> what would you say uh, the environment is like on campus right now? Because I know a lot of our viewers are probably at home and they see those Drexel wardrobes and they might be interested to hear how it's going. So the campus is definitely not what it usually is. Like it's, it's it feels really, really empty, especially on this side of um, this side of the street where like all the dorms are there and you would usually see like people hanging out by Chick-fil-A or stuff like that. Um, it's definitely really empty, but um, at the same time for the people that are here, um, there's, there's almost like a sense of community, like we're all in this together. So for me and the Art and International students, um, sometimes we can just cook, cook a meal together or, you know, discuss what we're doing in STAR and stuff like that. That's very nice. I'm glad that you guys can have each other. I know that the STAR program offered this summer term to do your research, and then I believe they're doing like a spring, summer, fall, winter option as well for the potential to do research on campus. Why did you guys decide to choose this option as opposed to that one? Theoretically, it might have been better to do my project in the fall, winter, slash, like during the school year, because it's so hands-on. But I figured if I do this now, I have connections with this lab already. I'm actually working with the Miranda lab. So I've already got some experience with them, so they wouldn't have to teach me any training or like as much um, orientation as they would have had to. So I'm just trying to establish this connection with them. And so I'm doing a lot of um, digital data analysis. So the, at least I'm doing something. And uh, my hopes are that by the time fall comes, I can continue with this lab because since we're still in the sort of early mid stages of this project, when we really get down and dirty in the fall, then that's when I can kick it in and hopefully um, do some hands-on contribution. Yeah, that's really great perspective. Anch, do you feel like the research that you're doing, even though it's virtual, is still of benefit to you and you're learning a lot? Um, I would definitely say it's it's a benefit and definitely like there's a lot to learn, um, even though the remote uh, the research is remote. Um, since the only aspect that I think people dealing with computer science projects are actually losing on is the face-to-face -face interaction and collaboration, which we usually make up with some kind of a Zoom call or um, online collaboration. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I would say the learning trajectory is uh, more or less the same. For anyone watching this, maybe some incoming freshmen that are interested in the STAR program in the future, what is some advice that you have for them? Or do you have any words of encouragement for people that might be interested in applying? Stay true to yourself. The STAR program, from what I've seen, likes to have a very unique and diverse pool of researchers. So the worst thing you can do is tell yourself, I'm not good enough for this program, or the kind of stuff I'm doing isn't on par with what um, everyone else is doing in the program. And that's not true. 
because it's really hard to compare different disciplines and different interests. So as long as you show that you're passionate in what you do and that you're willing to put in the work and willing to, you know, give Drexel a good image, that's a key thing there. <laughs> and you're pretty much set. So just stay true to yourself and have that passion because that's really what Drexel is all about. Yeah, I think that's a great way to wrap this interview up. And I think that's great advice for any student at Drexel, especially students interested in the STAR program. So thank you guys so much for talking with me and telling us about your research projects. And thanks for the work that you're doing. Hopefully there's some major change that comes from your projects. Thanks guys so much for watching. If you're interested in some other research projects that STAR could be doing, leave a comment below and make sure to check out the Pannoni Honors College on Drexel's website. To stay up to date with all of our content, follow our Instagram at inside underscore ambition and subscribe below. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe and we'll see you soon.